Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm using a tool that I often use very early in my editing process and I have recently decided that may not be the best way to do it. I'm actually finding I like the results better when I use this tool at the end of my editing. Let me walk you through that and show you how I feel like I've been using this tool kind of wrong and how I feel a better way to use it is. Here we go, this is a base photo. I crop, I didn't crop, I straighten the photo using the crop tool. And as you can see here, I made some adjustments in develop raw. That's the base photo. And there it is now, a little bit of bump and exposure, a little contrast and highlights work, lifted the shadows a ton and made a slight temperature and tint adjustment once again to go from there to there. I'm gonna pop over to the tools menu and the tool I'm talking about today is Accent AI. Great tool, I use it all the time, but like I said, I often use it early in my edit and I feel like that may not be the right way to do it. It might be better depending on the photo, but it might be better to actually do it later or at the end of your edit. Let me explain my reasoning here and show you an example. Accent AI, great tool, pops color, contrast, detail. It does a lot of things. And to be clear, there may be photos where you can use this tool and maybe nothing else and get away with it, but it doesn't do that on every photo. What I've done in the past is do my stuff and develop raw, come over here, hit this with a 30 or 40, and you can kind of see it's a little over the top. I mean, it adds contrast. It does you know, accentuate kind of the stuff that's in the photo. It's called Accent AI. It's accentuating what's there. A little bit of color, a little bit of light, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of crunch. I mean, there's a fair amount of detail and kind of texture, for lack of a better word, in this photo. You got all these footprints on the beach, you've got these grasses, but even the sky, it's got the way these cloud patterns were, it's kind of a little bit crunchy and textured, and that just gets accentuated with Accent AI. I don't really like it. And so on a photo like this, I'm actually finding, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that just so you know that all I have is develop raw, but I'm finding that it works a lot better if I do that later or at the end of my edit instead. And let me walk you through that. So a photo like this, I would do structure AI. I'd probably go like negative 35 and I come into the masking menu and I think I would just go ahead and erase that negative structure from the grasses here simply because I want to keep a little bit of crunch in that part of the scene. So there's a rough masking job, something like that, but basically negative structure across the entire photo except for the grasses. I want to keep a little bit of crunch there, but the water, the sand, and most specifically the sky that has a little bit of texture in it, which I personally just don't really like a lot, that is now smoother because of this negative structure. So that's the first thing I would do after develop. And then I'd come to landscape and I'm gonna pop golden hour. It was a beautiful sunrise. You can see, I mean, it's a wonderful cloud formation. There's some nice warm tones and I wanna use golden hour to accentuate those. So once again, just before and after, warmer, looks nice overall. And here is where I now would use Accent AI at the end of my edit instead of at the beginning. Because if you remember at the beginning, it's accentuating or accenting all these different features in the photo. It's popping light, color, contrast, texture, it's cranking all that up and it made it to me look a little bit like an HDR or at least a little overly crunchy photo that maybe I didn't spend a lot of time editing, right? But using it later and perhaps a little bit less is gonna give you, I think, a better overall look. So even if I went to 40, which is I think about what I went to before, I think that looks better. It's not as crunchy. It's not as much overdone. The clouds are not as dark as they were. That contrast is not overdone quite as much. I think that looks better, but I think I'd probably go, even if I went as high as 35, I still think that's a nice accent to the photo. So there it is before and after. And so try it later or at the end of your edit and try it with a gentle amount because of what it does. It does accentuate or accent what's in the photo. So if you make other adjustments first, I feel like the impact that it has on your photo that's already been edited is less. And depending on the image, that might be the right look for it. And I started thinking about it, I was like, oh, it's actually called Accent AI. It's not Edit AI. It's not designed to be just you know, slid all the way to 100 and get a crazy over the top look. And yes, there are photos where sliding it pretty far can help. But things like this, not really a good example of when you wanna slide Accent AI all the way to the right. I think it's best if it's used in gentle amounts and later in the process doesn't have as much of a kind of garish kind of over the top look. It has a more subtle accent. Like I said, it's accent AI designed to accent, I think, 
what you've already done to the photo as opposed to replace the actual editing that you might normally do. So there it is, Accent AI. And I think overall, I've got a nice looking photo that frankly looks better this way than if I'd used Accent AI early in the edit. So something to think about, try switching Accent AI if you use it often at the beginning of your edit. Try switching it at the end, see what kind of results you get. Just something I've been playing with. I kind of like this approach better and I wanted to share that with you. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time and until then, adios.